All right, I haven't done a book review in quite a long time, but I received a promotional copy of The Serpent and the Pentagram, The Official Chronicles of Necromantia, as written by the Magus, uh, who is the uh, bassist and vocalist, a co-bassist, if you will, of the band uh, from the, its inception. Um, and this comes uh, as sort of the, the duty to go back and... Uh, do justice to the legacy of Necromantia before it officially ended in uh, 2021, uh, which included recording a final album, uh, writing this uh, sort of memoir, and uh, that you know, and then releasing some collections, box sets, and things that were uh, special sort of editions to celebrate uh, the 32-year career of the band. And uh, up front in the forward, I, the, there's a lot of really interesting notes here that I really never thought about. And the first one is that Necromancia never performed live. Baron Blood wasn't interested in it, and uh, neither is the Magus in general. So that was kind of shocking because it made me realize right away that I never paid attention to the details of Necromancia so much as I just had the albums and lumped them in with uh, Greek Hellenic black metal and I think that's important because this album or I'm sorry this book does a really great job of pulling you out of lumping them in with others and seeing how this was an important keystone for the early uh, Hellenic black metal uh, sound in a lot of ways because you know uh, as the book is pretty clear there were a lot of side projects there was a lot of uh really impressive experiences that led up to the formation of the band, uh, including the custom bass that they show off for the eight string bass that Baron Blood played, uh, as well as just the fact that the Magus pretty much engineered a lot of my favorite albums, just from, from black metal in general, in terms of like Rod and Christ, uh, Verathron and whatnot. So uh, what we get out of the book is maybe some renewed appreciation for where these folks counted or how, how much they've counted in creating this sound. But also it really does a great job of having guest uh, quotes in here that emphasize that this was a pretty avant-garde band for its time. It was a, a band that added a lot of influence to the big personality of black metal early on. And also for me, it reminded me that those albums past uh, Ancient Pride don't actually suck. Like, uh, they're actually pretty good. Um, which, it's not that I never listen to them, but I don't pick them up as often as the first two. So for me, Scarlet Evil Witching Black is like the Necromancia album. It's the one I've listened to the most, uh, and I've been obsessed with that one for a couple of, you know, more than two decades now. So, uh, part of that is why I'm so... I was so enthusiastic about getting into this book, but there were a couple of things that, uh, uh, so this book is co-written by Ari Shock of uh, Shock Fanzine, which is a horror related, uh, thing that he does. And he provides a lot of the context for the conversational writing in the book, which is basically the whole thing is a giant interview where the Magus kind of takes over the conversation and goes through every single, um, side project, a lot of the uh, recording work that he did, uh, and just uh, general getting an idea of the physical locations of things, the scenes where they printed flyers. There's so many great details there that are really worth uh, getting into beyond uh, personal anecdotes of growing up being metal in an age where it wasn't acceptable. And uh, a lot of that context is really, it's pretty cool to remember that uh, things were different back then. And it especially in Greece, uh, among other places. And they, they do a great job of putting you there through the sort of not quite fanzine format, but a format where it does read like uh, responses to questions uh, in an interview. Now, that's a little bit different than what we'd gotten from uh, Steve Sylvester's The Necromancer of Rock but there's actually a lot of really similar things to these two folks that we find in their life and how they got into hard rock and heavy metal and the occult and things like that. They're both big personalities that, that like a lot of the same things. So having both books and comparing the two in the moment was, was pretty interesting. And I think uh, they're, they're pretty similar experiences in terms of reading. Uh, and then 
you know, I could go on about other books that are related to the uh, Greek black metal scene, but a lot of that uh, didn't feel redundant because I think this book focuses so heavily on the Magus experience, and he gives so many details of his own that this feels like a really valuable uh, boon of, co of context that, you know, you just never expect to get for a band like this who keep it pretty close to their chest in terms of why they do what they do and uh, and whatnot. So I didn't find the sections where they talked about other bands quite as interesting, and it took a very long time to get to uh, the actual formation of Necromantia. We are missing Baron Blood's um, input, and that can't be helped. Uh, so th there is uh, a lot of this book that really is more about uh, the Magus and I think that's invaluable context. It's very uh, important for what Necromancy is, was, uh, and uh, where it went. Um, but then again, uh, some of those other bands and, and some of the, the newer things that have happened with them, it was, there was quite a lot of it that took the conversation away from Necromancia for too long before we got to the Baron Blood section and learning more about his life and, and uh, allowing him to keep his privacy um, beyond, you know, liking to smoke, drink, and keep to himself, which is which is totally cool. Um, so really what we get in the end is, uh, you know, this is where he's been, this is where he's going, and I think it's cool to see that, like, uh, the Magus is uh, working in Yoth Iria, which is a, a pretty impressive band already, and uh, working on a solo album as well. So this is like a, a fine way of tying off Necromancia for what it was and, uh, you know, acknowledging that it was a bigger thing than maybe they realized. And, um, you know, their later albums were actually pretty cool and they're worth going back to. So with all that context, I found this to be a really valuable book. Um, it is only about 230 pages or less. It's not a, and a lot of those are pictures too. So it's not uh, a really demanding read. It's not going to take you forever to get through. I probably read through it four times in two days is a pretty uh, easy read. Uh, and there were little gripes, like there was, you know, they typed out lol in some of the writing, which was just kind of funny, but otherwise, yeah, it's a pretty uh, casual read that gives you a ton of awesome details on Hellenic or Greek black metal, which I'm very passionate about. So, you know, for me, it's an essential book. It's a thing that you have to have if you're a fan of that. So easy recommendation for me, obviously very high recommendation. It's going to be the definitive Necromantia biography. It's written directly by the, the only fellow who knows, you know, whatever happened all those years. And you have other contexts in other books as well. So, and that all lines up pretty well. So, uh, definitely, again, uh, a high recommendation. And make sure you go and uh, read the review, get more detail. A little bit of a scrambled review because I was taking notes a lot. So, you know, check it out and uh, see if that's you're down, uh, up your alley. Yeah.